What is fine tuning and transfer learning? Well, these topics were trend on 2017 and you can see lots of articles on every deep learning blog because it's an effective technique and with these techniques you can have good accuracy in a short amount of time. To understand this I create a scenario that I suppose you are new to riding bicycle and you don't know yet. Since you can't cycle you are not able to ride a motorbike. Well to ride a motorbike you should cycle. You probably know cycling if you ride a motorbike. However if you don't even know cycling you probably don't know how to ride a motorbike. But if you learn cycling you are more likely to ride a bike as you can see. Well conditions are not the same with cycling but the concepts are the same. So transfer learning works with the same logic, with the same thing. So what are those transfer learning and fine tuning? Well these methods are the methods that you can adjust the pre-trained model for your data set. For example you pick ResNet that has been that trained on ImageNet and has weights. So if you apply the same architecture with the same weights and if you fine-tune it, if you detect the right parameters with it, you can get a good accuracy in a short amount of time with your data set. Even these data sets are not related, this is not a problem. So there are already convolutional network architectures that trained on ImageNet data and has very accurate predictions and has high accuracy. So why don't we use them and why don't we use the weights of them in our projects? And also if you apply transfer learning or fine tuning, you are more likely to get a good accuracy on your problem, but this is not guaranteed, but it's really worth to try. So what do you transfer? Transferring the knowledge of high accuracy CNN architecture. So what is the knowledge? You transfer the filters that have success on big data sets. So you have these filters that can distinguish Im images but you should change the weights little bit so while changing little bit you are doing fine tuning and you should fine tune them so I know that these sentences are not wrong but this is an ugly way to teach well let's check the awesome work by Fabian and in his blog we will see some work well it's about visualizing deep neural networks classes and features and Fabian visualized the intermediate layers and I will show you the results. So this is actually, these are the initial results, these are the initial visualization of uh, intermediate layers. However, uh, if you see the results you will be surprised because it's on uh, animal data set. Uh, this convolutional neural network is on animal data set and you can see animals in these filters and these animals are where is that? American lobster, flamingo, German shepherd, starfish, giant panda, abacus and etc. So you can see the animals for example like this and this is the results of a good convolutional network that works on that works on a good data set uh, sorry that trained on a data set and if you get a good accuracy on your data set you probably have these kind of visualizations on your intermediate levels but you can see it more clearly in that pictures so this is interesting well, this is the uh, visualization of intermediate layer according to EPO. So, in from first iteration to lots of iterations, you start by uh, sorry, you start by these uh, images in your visualizations. You get these, 
filters and you get these filter or you get these filter results but the times go time goes on and your uh, convolutional network uh, tries to get a good accuracy on the data set so you get these uh, meaningful images in your intermediate filters and you can see uh, animals in these inter in these visualizations so why it starts from nothing to uh, meaningful uh, images well actually uh, the filters now uh, as the time goes on the filters are able to understand uh, and classify or distinguish the images and learn the features and now the filters are now able to detect uh, able to detect features of images and by the time goes on I mean the time it uh, epo if you, by the iterations that you make is near to thousand in this example you see that uh, you converge on the data your convolutional network, neural network converge on data and you see these meaningful images to see the meaningful images you actually uh, create filters uh, actually convolutional networks filter gets uh, optimized for the optimal values to classify images and you get these results so the filters are uh, the actor for detecting features on these images so what you are doing in transfer learning well actually you can see the images and I am adding these uh, resources on slides well what you transfer is the filters that can distinguish uh, the features of uh, objects in the image and the filters that uh, make you get good accuracy on your data set on a data set so you transfer these filters to uh, detect features on your data set well what we will be doing is classifying dogs and cats so in next video we will apply transfer learning it means that we will be we will transfer the filters of uh, ResNet or uh, other convolutional network architecture. We will take the filters of it and apply it to our data set. Since these data sets are data set sets are similar in ImageNet, you can see you don't have uh, microscopic images. So in our data set, we don't have microscopic images. They are the pictures that are taken. Uh, from social life so we will take we will transfer these filters for our problem and we will try to get a fast uh, we will try to get good accuracy in a short amount of time let's go back to slides and let's open it and thanks to Fabian for this awesome work you should check it so what are the advantages of transfer learning well it is not guaranteed these methods are not guaranteed but they also have theoretical background but if you transfer the learned features or the filters to your problem uh, your computation intensity will be moderate because uh, you will freeze lots of layers and you will just fine-tune them and also training time will be uh, very short because you will be freezing the layers of convolutional networks you don't want to lose these filters and you your model accuracy will, accuracy will be good but it's it is not guaranteed to get a good accuracy but we will try it on our data set well when and how to fine-tune and this image is taken by uh, taken from CS231 course in Stanford so if your dataset is small and similar to original dataset you can apply it for example if you apply uh, convolutional network on microscopic images and you have other problem and uh, in other cell uh, you have other work in other cell and you want to apply uh, 
transfer learning, you can do it because since the data is similar to original data, you can expect higher level features in convolutional neural networks and you can get a good accuracy. Well, if your data set is large and similar to original data set, for example, in our case, our data is not that big, but we can say that it's big. What is our data? K dogs and cat data. We can apply transfer learning because we are now taking uh, the filters from ImageNet dataset, uh, ImageNet challenge. So, new dataset is small. Let's say that new data dataset is small, but we are different from the original dataset. It's well, it's worth to try actually. And also, if your new dataset is large and very different from the original dataset, you can now also try transfer learning. Well, it because it should be or it could be better from training convolutional neural net from stretch because you don't have to initialize ways, initialize ways. Also, you don't have to work on hyperparameter tuning, and it's really worth to try.